politicians from Victoria, Labor Senator Kimberly Kitching and Liberal Senator James Hi, Patterson. Andrew. James, uh, Victoria, should it learn from what may now be the lesson from Europe? Europe was once, you know, well, learn the terrible lessons. Should it now learn a better lesson, ease the bans on the young and the healthy workers and protect the old? I do understand the point that you're making, Andrew, and I think you're probably right about the improved treatment options for people now that we've learned a bit more about this virus. But there's a couple of notes of caution that I would add. Uh, it's possible that the second waves that we're seeing in Spain and Italy and France are less deadly because their first waves were so deadly. In effect, Australia didn't really have a first wave at all. We had a very small outbreak which we controlled. And what we're calling the second wave in Victoria now is the real first wave, the real first uncontrolled community transmission, which we avoided the first time. I don't think that emulating Europe's experience in totality is something that any Australian would want to do because our deaths per million from COVID-19 is about 30. Uh, in Spain, it's over 600. In Italy, it's almost 600. In France, it's almost 500. So you'd have against to, you that note of caution, to take Against that note of caution, James, I would just say this. Japan, per head of population, has had fewer deaths mm -hmm. than we have. Same pattern there, basically. Yes, that's right, Andrew, um, although they did have more significant initial transmission uh, as we did. But I think, again, as I said, you're right about the treatment options being better. Personally, I think the better and more interesting international comparison is Taiwan, which has the yes. rare um, combination of both extremely low rates of deaths. There are 0.29 deaths per 1 million. And mm -hmm. they've also had um, very few controls on society and the economy, and it's relatively open now in Taiwan. That's the real lesson, I think, for most of the Western world, where you can have potentially both of those things. I think that's absolutely correct, but people don't seem to want to look at Taiwan. I've plugged it from the start. Kimberly, the, the crackdown in Victoria, I mean, surely federal Labor politicians must be looking at that with horror. Well, I think, Andrew, that, um, you know, we are where we are. Uh, I think we can all say that the hotel quarantine you know, there were obviously significant issues there and there's evidence coming out at the Coates inquiry uh, and, in fact, further evidence today. But this is a temporary health, public health measure, uh, the current lockdown. I think that, uh, you know, we are so hoping that... what's so temporary about a lockdown that's been most of the last well, six months will go on for another two months at least probably much longer, because the trigger for releasing us from this terrible, terrible crackdown are performance targets that Queensland doesn't even meet. Well, can I... But what I would say to you, Andrew, about a, mo a month ago, almost exactly, there were 700, 700 cases. Today, there were 50. Now, yes, in I'd, that it would month, work. I said lives, time, lives work. will have it been would saved. Work if you locked lives up every single Victorian in solitary confinement and fed them bread and water and not let them go out in the but sunshine, we, that too would work. And, the and question what, is the yeah. cost, and is there a better way of doing this? Are you telling me there's not? Well, I think that what we're seeing in Europe, as James has, has said, is what, what we first saw in Australia was actually returned cases from returned travellers. What we are really experiencing is really a first wave in, in, effect, in effect. And what we are trying to do is now control community transmission. Kimberly, you guys low. have got to cut those what we Victorians are seeing... loose. This is a disaster. I tell well, you something. Actually, I'll tell you I, why this is so I don't, I don't... useless. James, I want to point this to you. And Kimberly, I will give you the last word. Don't you worry. The curfew on Victorians, right, is incredible. Almost no other country has a curfew to fight this virus. And the state's chief health officer said it wasn't even his idea. Here he is. It wasn't something that I was against from a public health perspective. But were, you, were you consulted on it? Yeah, I was consulted on it, but it was, uh, it was a separate decision-making uh, pathway. Now, asked about that today, Premier Daniel Andrews, who claims to act on medical advice, he said this is all on medical advice, suggested this curfew may in fact have been something suggested by police to suit the police. Here he is. The fact there's a curfew in place that does grow by an hour, it extends out to nine o'clock quite soon. That just means the job of Victoria Police is much, much easier. It limits movement. Ultimately, all of these, all these measures are the, are the, are the, the product of advice. Some of that's public health advice, some of it's law enforcement advice. 
James, should laws limiting our freedom so drastically be imposed by police just to make life easier for police? Andrew, this is a very disturbing revelation today because we've been told throughout this crisis that everything is based on medical advice, everything is based on scientific evidence, and we can't question it, we can't debate it, because to do so would be to argue with the experts and they can't be argued with. Uh, this proves today that, in fact, that's not the case for at least one restriction, and who knows about any others. It's been essentially imposed for the convenience of the police and the convenience of the state government, and it is an incredibly repressive, authoritarian thing to do. And it could only be justified, in my view, at, with the most extensive and generous and um, comprehensive medical advice that justified it. Now we learn that not only is there not very good advice, there's no advice at all of the medical efficacy of this. It is just to allow to make the police jobs easier. Well, that's not a good enough reason to confine every Victorian into their homes effectively under house arrest. Kimberly Kitching. I have just finished writing an article for ASPE, the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, in which I do in part examine social contract theory. So what, what kind of society do we want to be? What rights and freedoms are we willing to give up in order to live safely in a society? So I think I have given a lot of consideration to this issue and I do think, Andrew, that going forward we do need to think about, uh, you know, the, the rights and freedoms we have, what we're willing to give up um, in order to have a safe and secure society. No, no, but here's the point, the Kimberly. We've sense. just heard today, but we've just heard today, this was not done on the advice of the top, top health expert advising the Premier. This was something to make it easier for the police. It, was, it seems to have been a police recommendation. And I think what, what the state government is doing is taking in advice from many, many corners of the government and that's what they are, that is all coming out in a plan, in a, you know, what is often just a page document. But there's obviously a lot of consideration that is being given to different elements of that. I think that, um, you know, and I think that that is, I mean, it... Really, I mean, th that is the way that government has to act. It is taking advice from lots and lots of different places and trying to formulate the best the response. The police are not that it can. there to give health advice, right? If I wanted health advice, I do not go to the police. They have given advice to make life easier for them. This is the makings of a police state. And if Labor doesn't draw a line under this and say to Dan Andrews, you've got to be able to say to Dan Andrews, please, you're trashing our brand. You're making us defend the indefensible. Daniel Andrews is out of control and Labor's got to recognise this. He'll drag all of you over a cliff because this is not going to end up very well. It is a stain on Labor's reputation, in my view. I'm sorry, I've got a bit passionate about this because I think it's just so dangerous what's going on here and there's not enough people calling it out. Kimberly Kitching, James Patterson, thank you never lessons. Kimberly, I'm sorry to have given you a hard time. Next week, much sweeter. <laughs> You'll be oh, lovely. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>